All right, Wargamers, so before we jump right into just cutting stuff, this is one situation where I actually gonna sl am going to slow down for a second and do a little bit of actual measuring with numbers as opposed to measuring with my heart. Like, I, wanna, I, want, I want you guys to see the ultimate plan here, but also I want to lay it out for myself to help my workflow and help me keep things organized and on track. So... On camera, you guys are going to see me build one level. We're going to go through the steps. And, and, and like I said, it's it's not a difficult build. But we're looking at three squares right now. One, two, three. Each of these squares needs to be one and a half feet by one and a half feet because that is the prescribed size of the room. So we're looking at 18 inches all the way around 18 inch square pieces to start with then we need walls now i have learned from my time in wargaming uh that the average scale size wall for the for a floor of a building is about three inches so we have three quarter inch foam is what i have in house uh ready to go so we're gonna need about four inches of wall to compensate for that bottom piece um taking up space so that'll be four walls four inches tall now two of the walls i will say this side and this side need to be a little bit longer these two pieces we can cut exactly to 18 these pieces we want to cut to about 18 and a third ish um because no a little bit more than that we need to cover the overhang like we need to compensate for the thickness of the other two walls here so that everything lines up as flush if these pieces are three quarter inch thick that's an inch and a half so we need to put an extra three quarters of an inch on each side man i'm not a mathematician so we need these to be an extra inch and a half long um as opposed to the 18 so these need to be 19 and a half now the ultimate plan here my ultimate goal here is to be able to play the final mission of the torvarden scenarios for rangers of shadow deep on top of an actual tower elevated so this would be elevated a grand total of about a foot off my table so not huge but enough so that it feels like i'm up in the air you know i'll do the table with some trees and some like maybe some batting or something to make some clouds but that's where that's, that's a talk conversation for another time so we need them to be able to stack so the easiest way that i know to do that is to just put dowels in the pieces that go on the bottom we're also going to need doors which i have found a really 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 cool file on thingiverse that is a door that has a hollow piece and so you trace it onto your foam and you cut it out and then you just put a skewer or a rod down through the top and it creates a hinge so that you get a door that actually opens um so i'm gonna say if this is my ground floor i need my door and then on the front i need steps uh because again to compensate for that three quarters of an inch thickness on the bottom tile now only on the bottom floor the other floors are going to have doors in them i think one has to have two doors but i will probably not put doors that actually open in those because again i want to be able to stack in i don't want there to just be random doors on the sides of it which then, then again i suppose i could turn the buildings like turn the floor so that you don't really see the doors from the angle that i'm playing from so that may be an option as well that i'll explore later but all together here let me no way it'll take me too long to do this on camera let me let me pause for a second and i'll get back to you guys okay so we need about seven square feet six six and three quarter square feet to cover the floors so out of a 12 foot piece we should have no problem doing the floors and the walls um and then we're looking to you know, now the top of the tower we will take a look at 
in another video. But our goal is to be able to create a tower that stacks. Because it'll look cool. So, come along. We're going to get into the, the cutting and stuff at this point. So, come along as we build up Tor Varden. Okay. So, there's my 18 by 18. Yup. Double check it. I only had to cut two pieces of foam to get one that was actually square. Because it is important that this is legitimately square. We need it as dead on 18 by 18 as we can possibly get it. Now, once you... But the good board is... Oh, Lord. Words. Give me a second. Okay. The good part about it is, though, once you have one, you can use it as a template. So I'm going to go ahead and trace out and cut my other two pieces that I need so that I can continue working with this, and then I can have them already cut out and matched up so that everything will be beautiful when it comes together. Another thing worth mentioning when you are squaring these up. Quit licking the whites, cannoli. When you're squaring these up, look for your factory edges. Now, unless you have a truck, you probably had to cut this up to get it home. But try to find your factory edges because you know that at least that side should be square. And then we just trace out. And we rinse and repeat. And as a general reminder, when you're cutting foam, especially when you want to cut foam precisely, don't try to go all the way through it at one time. You don't, you're not, you know, you don't, you don't got to do all that. You, it, it ain't got to be all that. Just very gently start with, you know, a, a, a shallow cut just so you can maintain control of your blade and make the cut be where you need it to be. Once you've got that first cut scored, your knife will just naturally want to follow that path as you come back through it. And then you can crack it off on the edge of the table um, clean so that you don't actually break off more than you want to break or so that you don't end up with a super just jagged, nasty, you know, swervy line um, kind of edge on your board. Especially, you know, for some things it doesn't matter, but we're doing a building, so we want to be as precise as we can. So now that I got my floor cut, I'm going to get my walls cut. And again, I'm going to cut... A wall for each side make sure that it fits properly and then I'm going to use those as my masters and I'm going to just hammer out a whole bunch of these So, now that our mini pieces are cut, everything fits up pretty well. We're not going to glue anything together yet because, I'm just kind of doing a quick dry fit, because we want to um, do all of our texturing and everything. Oh, that still came out wrong. Oh, wait, never mind. No, it didn't. Yes, that fits together well. That fits together beautifully. So. Before we do our assembly, I want to go ahead and do my textures because I feel that it will be easier to do that before everything is put together. Now, you could very easily, you could take a yardstick, you could lay it out in very nice, neat grids. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to take this dull pencil and I'm going to start just kind of making shapes little amorphous blobs 
Um, nothing, you know, I'm gonna keep them pretty big. This is an old place, it's a big watchtower. They hold big rocks up here to make this, why not? Um, but I'm just gonna proceed over the whole surface. I don't want to go in so deep that I pop the surface of the phone. That's why I think it's best to do this with a dull pencil. Um, because we don't really want to puncture down into the the innards of it. We just want to push down on this top layer and compress the foam underneath it a little bit without breaking that top kind of skin or what have you that's on that piece. So, and we're just going to continue on until we've got this. And I'm going to do the walls the exact same way, just this random kind of stone pattern. And we'll come back when we're ready to glue stuff together. All right, with our texture all laid in nice and pretty, we're not quite done there though. And before I do the walls, I wanna go ahead and do this next step, which is to take a piece of good old aluminum foil, as we say around here. We're gonna ball that up and then just kind of run it around. I like to do little circles, try a different size. We just wanna kind of weather that that pattern up a little bit, give it a little bit more texture on top of that flagstone that we've already created. And there we've got all of that kind of stoned up texture worked into that. That floor tile, that level of Tor Varden is ready to go. So I'm gonna set that to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and work on the walls. Now with the walls, remember we wanna do both sides inside of the building as well as the outside because the finished product we want to be able to go multi-tier to have a big nice tower to play the final scenario on so i'm gonna go ahead and work on that and we'll be back to y'all in just a moment all right so now we've got our floor stoned and textured we've got our walls both sides now before i assemble this i think it's going to be best to paint this before putting all the pieces together. I think it'll make it glue together better. I also think it will be much easier to actually paint. So my next step is going to be to put some gesso over both sides of the walls or all sides of the walls and across the top and the edges of the base to seal everything in, give me a nice surface to then go in and prime it with black spray paint and then go in and do some dry brushing with various shades of gray and maybe go in with a little bit of airbrushing you know to hit some some yellows and some earthy tones just just to mix it up so that it's not too uniform so that it's got some variety to the look and the light because that's going to make it look better not only on camera for you guys to see when i use it in games but just in general for the sake of looking at the table when things are just all just flat color and tone it it creates almost a void of visual interest where there could instead be a strong emphasis for visual interest. And since this is, you know, the entire, pretty much the entirety of the board that I'll be running for those scenarios. And then I'll be using this later. I'll use this for burning light and for D and D and for, for many other things over the span of its life, I'm sure. So that being said, before I get too carried away and start rambling, I'm going to take these over to the dirty paint, my dirty paint station. I'm going to get these gessoed up, let them dry, and we will come back and talk about paint and maybe some color selection, some stuff like that when we get there. Okay, so we got everything painted up. Textures are still showing up real nice because we airbrushed everything. And the next step here is going to be to wash this. Now, if you happen to be living the kind of your best life where you could wash this whole thing in Agrax Earthshade, um, then A, get at me. We should be friends. And B, I approve of your lifestyle. <laughs> However, if you don't want to spend 30 bucks to wash this, you know, $2, two, 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 or three, two to $3 piece of terrain, 
Um, we need to look at making a wash, which is a very, very simple process. All right, to make our wash, we want to start with water. And I'm not going to sit here and squirt all that water in there because I will be here all day. And so will you. And all of us have other things that we have to do with our lives besides toy soldiers, which is unfortunate, but a sad truth of life. So I'm just going to I'm gonna start with about a quarter cup, maybe a little bit less. Measure it with your heart, you know. Is it in the science? Is it in the science? Art's not supposed to be a science. I firmly stand on that, and I'm never going to change my mind. Now, stuff like this, this is where I like to use these types of things. Folk art, all this super cheap craft paint. This is where this media gets to shine. This is where it gets to stand up and do its thing. So we want to add, I'm using mostly raw umber. I know that looks real bad combined with the sound i apologize uh, we won't get a fair amount of that in there and then ooh, let it go and then we want to come at it let me not set that on my closet it'll mess it up and i just bought these things so i don't want to mess them up not yet anyways so then i'm gonna take some black um add that in and then we're gonna take some of this stuff. This is Flow Aid. Uh, I normally use this stuff for like locking down bushes and things like that on terrain pieces or on bases, but it's it's meant to act as a medium for pigment. Um, loosens it up, makes everything flow a little bit easier than if it were just suspended in water, but not so much though as if it were suspended in actual paint medium and we're just gonna give that a stir and it should have a little bit of body but you see that see how it just runs back down but when it when you pull it up it's not super thin it's got some pigment in it that's what we want now we're gonna take this with a big brush and just sloppity doppity it all over the place um you can try out different things you know i normally just brush it on but i've seen others people and talked to other people who will do like a stippling technique where they're just kind of loading up a brush and stab it but i'm a i'm a slop it on and roll on kind of fella so we're going to take this and take it outside because it's messy i don't want to mess up everything so we'll take this outside and knock this out and let it dry now this will take a little bit longer than like your standard agrax earth, earth shade or something like that right it'll it'll take a little bit but uh we'll come back and take a look at the finished results after that and then we're getting really close to the finish lines here finish line here with this build all right so with the wash on the other part of the model i'm gonna go ahead and make my stairs now this is just one way of doing this and the main reason that i'm doing it is to make sure I cut the hole for the door at the right height. So I'm gonna use this bullseye compass. I'm gonna do a round kind of days step. And so I'm gonna start by marking, yep. Mark that up really well. And again, this is probably not gonna do a whole lot of drawing into the foam so much as it's going to, oh no, look at that, it actually drew on it. Awesome. So that's going to be my main platform. And then I want to mark the cuts going down. And this part's going to be probably, actually, no, that's not going to be my first step. This is going to be my first step. Step. And I want each step to get a little bit wider. Step. Step. Okay. So, hopefully this works. <laughs> um, first thing is going to be to trim off this piece, and then I'm going to get just get to cutting.
So that is our stairs all prepped up. Now I had originally planned on uh, attaching this to the side of my building, but I don't know. I may keep this separate just as a little standalone piece of terrain. You know, put it when you got like a throne room or something, you know, boom, there's your days to put your throne on. So I'm still going to use it to gauge, but I do think that I'm going to maybe keep it separate and then just have it to have as, you know, a piece, a, another modular piece of scatter terrain. But I'll, I'll decide. But I went ahead and took my pen and drew in the flagstones on this part and then pretty regular blocks on this part. That way I've got my texture. I did, however, forget to come up the side there. But I don't know where I'm at depth-wise in the foam other than on this outside edge. I don't know that's going to matter too much. But again, you know, attention to detail matters, especially when it's something small like this that can be very quickly and easily remedied. I do have some jagged edges here. I'm just going to leave them. I'm not super worried about that. Um, those top layers, I think the top layers are thin enough. But anyways, so this I'm going to go, I'm going to put gesso on it. I'm going to prime it black and I'm going to airbrush it with the same combination of light grays to brownish grays to browns that I used for the other pieces now what i will do here is i will keep these steps towards the middle of it lighter because that would have been the part of the steps that have had the most traffic and then we will once this is all painted up i will make a decision about whether i'm going to attach it or retain it separately but either way we will take a look at getting the door cut into the side of our building all right, all right, all right. We got everything washed, including the steps. We're ready to do our dry brush. Now, for my dry brush here, I'm going to use this kind of, I think it's probably a two, two inch, two inch kind of house painting brush, like you would use for trim or whatever on your house. Um, but it's got a nice stiff bristle, and more importantly, it's large. So I'll be able to do a lot of surface area very quickly. Now, I, for this, because model paints are expensive, and because the craft paints are usually a little bit too thin to dry brush with well, in my experience anyways. Um, so I'm going to be using my artist acrylics. I'm going to use my canvas acrylics for this. And I'm going to mix a very, very light gray. So lots of white, just a little bit of the black. Paint's all mixed up. Now for those of you that may be unfamiliar with dry brushing, it's a super, super simple process. We just want to load some paint into our brush and then we want to take a rag or paper towel or whatever and just knock off the excess and then we're just going to very very lightly bring that across our surface we don't want to press down hard here we just want to just with a little whisper you know, as Bob Ross would have used to say, you know, just kind of, just with a wish and a prayer and a hope that you don't put too much on, just very gently. And this is coming up very, very bright. So I may actually go and add a little bit more black into my gray that I'm using here uh, and, and go over. But it's just, that's, that's the whole process is just make sure you've got the very minimum amount of paint possible and just drag it and let it catch all those edges and raised parts and all that texture that we've already created through this process. Now is when that texture is gonna be able to pop out and shine. Now, as I said, I am definitely gonna mix a little bit more black into this because that is too bright for me. And then we're gonna get the rest of this thing dry brushed.
All right, so that, I went ahead and dry brushed all three of the rooms, all three of the layers of the tower, just because I wanted to go ahead and get them all done while I had the same color mixed. Um, so next step is going to be to cut a hole for the front door. Now I'm only going to be doing one of these pivoting doors and it's going to be the main door that you come in. And then the rest I have just like stand up, you know, 3d printed doorways that I can set where place wherever I need, but I want there to be one, one actual door. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to take this and I'm going to take my steps. I'm going to line my steps up where I need them to be. Should be the top of the steps is the same is max thickness. I didn't take anything off the very top. So I should be able to just put the door here, outline it with a marker, and then cut out the shape, paint the inside rim black, give maybe give that a quick dry brush, and then put the door in place. Now I think I'm going to leave these stairs unattached, however. Um, a because I can then use them, you know, in a room or something like if I need a daze, you know, I can place that there. But also for the sake of storage, if these are squares, they're very easy to stack and store. However, if I have a piece hanging off the front of it like this, then there becomes an issue of like that piece getting damaged or not. Also, I'm going to actually leave the stairs unattached, both for the sake of safety for the piece, as well as ease of storage, as well as versatility and modulation so i'm gonna get this laid out lined up get a hole cut and get a door in place and once that door is in place we're ready we're ready to play we're we're ready to do it so this is this wait yeah yeah this is the last step all right let's get it okay and that is door in place it'll open it'll close now i had tried to shoot footage of me doing this however i i guess thought i had pushed the button and didn't so this is a really simple piece to install though just lay it up against it trace out the shape i just scratched it in with a pencil then cut through with your blade and take a piece of very thin bamboo skewer or i used a piece of framing wire that i had laying around and just straighten it out run it straight down through the hole in the door and then your door will swing now it doesn't swing great to the inside it's definitely a pull not a push so that's one thing it's got going for it now and then that's it that we're done we got our stairs we're ready for lower torvarden and any other you know DD &D or any other game that i want to you that i need you know a large room for um Overall, I'm very happy with the build. Now, there are some things that I would do differently next time or will do differently next time, but they're very, very small. So, also, I want to mention, put a coat of varnish. Just spray, like, Kamar varnish over the top of everything. Try to kind of lock it down a little bit. Um, and other than that, you know, what I would do, sorry, what I would do differently is I would take the texture from the, the stone. Let me move this down. From the stone and bring that up over so that we get that texture around and then the same thing on these edges i would that's a way out of square but it happens um and i would have brought the texture around that as well beyond that i'm like i said i'm very happy with the build it's going to serve its purpose for this game this mission of rangers of shadow demon is i'm sure that it's going to serve its purpose for other things in other games along the way if you stuck around this long hanging out with me while we build this this mammoth undertaking that is the lower reaches of the beacon tower of tor varden i want to say thank you and i hope you took something away from it that you'll be able to use at your own hobby table and to build your own better table uh thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out if you haven't hit that like button or the subscribe button or the bell notification consider hitting those for me because it really truly honestly does help the channel grow and help get me out there and help me keep making content that i hope you will continue to enjoy so for now though that is gonna that's gonna be it for today so i hope you have an amazing rest of your day and as always may the dice gods be ever in your favor and as always i'd like to say a big huge from the bottom of my heart thank you 
to our patrons who support us and pledge to us over on Patreon. You guys are the absolute best. If you enjoyed the content you saw here today and that's something that you would like to consider doing to help out the channel, go over there, check out the link in the description, check out the Patreon. There's a lot of cool stuff over there, including access to our Discord server, talk to me, hang out with me, talk about our work, what we got going on in the hobby. Um, some shout outs, all kinds of cool stuff. Check it out if that's something that you think you would be into. And regardless of whether or not you do that, I want you to know that I am incredibly grateful that you decided to stop by and spend part of your day with me today, rolling dice and pushing toy soldiers around. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And as always, may the dice be ever in your favor.